And so David, thank you so much for coming in today into, it's called the Smart Collective Mastermind. And it's a statewide piece that we put together. It was originally supposed to be a coffee appointment in the Southeast Valley of Phoenix. When we talk about our classes and you know what our ideas were, and it has um, transformed into something that I had no idea that it would ever become, um, which is a, a weekly mastermind. And we have learned so much from one another. That's why I changed it from a smart mastermind to a smart collective mastermind. Right. And um, through what we have done, we have noticed title reps only on Facebook. And I follow you like the Pied Piper. You've written the title Bible. I don't have a copy. You went and did all the hats recently. Um, it's, it's just you have been um, an inspiration in a time when there's been lots of confusion. And so I would love it if you could kind of just take over. We are recording it so that we can have this and we'll try to put some stuff over on social media, give you some love um, and just kind of go through what you see as you've been a top producer, you've been a leader in the industry and you just left Stuart title to go over and start, work with a startup in Southern California. I mean, tell us what you see in your crystal ball. <laughs> saw, we're, we're ready for it. But take I'm, it from there. I'm either a, uh, a brave man or a little dumb. And I'm probably a little bit of both. Uh, and I'm okay with that. So, you know, for, first and foremost, I'm, I'm, I'm not a coach. Daryl Turner is great. Mike Ferry is great. Tom Ferry is great. I'm, uh, I'm not a coach. I'm not, I'm not here to offer anything at all. Uh, you know, I, I followed all of these people. And, and like you said, I would encourage everyone, like, look at all the coaches. I draw stuff from Tom Ferry, from Mike Ferry from John Story, from Daryl Turner, like find what works for you in your own marketplace and find what works for you, you know, personally. And maybe you take it and you tweak it and then make it your own. So, you know, what, what I, I would love to talk to you today, and again, thank you for having me. Uh, you know, I, I love this. You, you guys are like my people. We speak the same language. Uh, we, we know exactly what we're talking about. And I have empathy for everything you go through and you have empathy for even what I go through. So thank you for the opportunity again, Terry. Um, you know, what I, what I kind of want to go over is, is what does the marketplace look like to me uh, from a, a sales rep perspective and a business growth perspective in general? Um, you know, I'll tell the story of, of what did the market look like when I came into the business? You know, how did I kind of shift and adjust to that? And then how did social media now, what kind of influence does that play in my model? Uh, and then finally, what does the new rep look like, right? Everyone wants to get to, okay, what is, what is tomorrow's sales rep look like? You know, because I, I think that's important that, you know, maybe won't, we won't all just jump on TikTok today, but we have to at least be aware of what's coming down the pipe. What are these young kids going to be into? What are they looking at? And how can we connect with them as well? So I'll start by this. Uh, I, I grew up in, uh, in the business of real estate. My mom's a broker. She's been a broker for four years. My dad's been in title uh, for 40 years. Uh, my stepdad own, uh, is a lender and my stepmom owns an escrow company. We have independence out here. So like when I, when I was like born and bred in the biz, it's like literally I would spend a Saturday with my mom in open houses. And I, my dad would take us out when I was like seven years old and hand out low pops and business cards. And, uh, he'd give us, yeah, brothers and sisters, he'd give us a quarter if someone like ordered a profile. And if you got a farm, it was like, oh my God, you get a dollar. And we'd take that money and uh, I'd buy baseball cards with it. You know, it, it probably wasn't, it probably isn't legal in today's child labor standards, but it's all good. It was just a way to connect, you know, with my dad. And also he just instilled some early, early grassroots of, of work ethic and never be afraid to talk to money. Um, so, I got into the business in 1999, and it, it was a, uh, a very normal market. Uh, nothing was going on. We didn't have a crazy refi boom, or we didn't have you know a, a crazy high interest rates, or you know not not much was going on. It was a normal market, which I enjoyed. That uh, you know, and, and as I started working, you know, with my father, and, and at the time it was my brothers and sisters. We were all working together, the Bravo team. You know, I, I started to find. I watched my dad, and he was such a blue collar man of work ethic nobody will outwork my father i mean he, he would make literally 20 calls a day that was the goal how do we stop by 20 offices today 
and we'd hit that number and it was such a, it was just a grind. And I love that. And I, I, I fed off of that. And that's, you know, hands down where I learned my own work ethic. But as, as we started working together, you know, I, I, I kept, you know, again, I love the Blackberry at the time. And, I, and I, I was able to grasp on what are some of the efficiencies that I can do, you know, instead of him getting the voicemail, answering the voicemail, writing it in a notepad, uh, you know, and then picking up the phone, calling customer service, being on hold for, you know, five minutes, and then reading off them address while he was driving, you know, from the situation, I would look at that and I'd be like, damn, like, number one, that's dangerous. You know, number two, like, there has to be a better way. So I created my own efficiencies, like in the market, marketplace. I started, you know, copying and pasting emails and just kicking them off to customer service. You know, and, and I'm, I'm fortunate enough at some point, I, you got to understand, I say this with all respect to my father. I love my father. He's the reason why I'm here, period. You know, but there was a time in which, you know, he was, he was closing a mail and revenue, and this is title only. And I was closing a mail in revenue and we were both like side by side. And I would look, we write together sometimes and I'd look at my day and look at his day. And I'd sit there and I'd say, damn, because of the adaption of efficiencies, I'm probably working like half of, half of the effort you're working, mm -hmm. you know, and you're working so hard and yet the outcome is the same. I'm doing just as much as you. The only difference is you're working twice as like hard to get there. And, you know, that, that's why I really started embracing efficiencies and, and what can I do better in the marketplace? So fast forward now, you know, we get to the iPhones and the, the Samsungs and stuff, and I started creating more efficiencies. So one of the biggest things that we we're talking about today is texting your clients, right? Hands down, one of the greatest things I can tell anyone on this call is, is download yourself an app, either a text blast, or there used to be one for the iPhone called Smurge, or, uh, you know, mass text is another one. Find that app. And let me tell you what the app does. The app does this. It allows you to create a text message. And you can create, you know, again, hey, this is Carrie, I've been thinking about you. Uh, let's get together for coffee soon, right? That text that you did yourself. But what, what the app does, it says, hey, and then blank. And then the little blank part, the app itself will auto-populate the person's first name into the text itself. So imagine this, like that text that you send out, hey, uh, just checking in, this is Kara, I, want, I would love to get together for coffee. When I would send those text messages out, where it was just a general text message, you know, my response rate, I'd send out at one time like 100 of them. And after you do it enough times, the, the response rate was getting down to like 15%, 20%. They'd be like, thanks, you know, have a great Friday, you too. But when you include the person's name into the text message, which the app does automatically for you, my response rate exploded to like 90%. So it would say, hey, Carrie, hey, Connie, hey, Valerie, hey, Brian, hey, Lisa. And it auto-populates 100 different text messages. And just that little first name, that it includes, the response rate, I'm telling you, was like 95%. So I would use this at month end. I would use this, especially during holidays. I would kick out a, a text message for Happy Thanksgiving. It's my, it's my favorite holiday. I just want to wish you and yours a, a wonderful weekend. And again, when I would say Happy Thanksgiving, Carrie, Valerie, my response rate, I'm telling you, exploded to like 90%. My only, my only warning is this, be careful because when you send out 200 text messages, you're gonna get like 180 responses and your phone is gonna explode like in your hand. It's so crazy. So like just plan on like closing the door, you know, and sitting there for the next couple hours just because you're gonna have 180 conversations that could possibly now be going on. Um, so anyways, stuff like that, go on. Uh, do you, have you ever texted out to just a, uh, a cold call? Have you ever used the, okay. the program? Hell yeah. Uh, all day. So, so in, in, you know, California, we have MTA reports, right? And then those were the reports that you, you see all the new listings taken. And we're a listing directed uh, area, right? The listing agent controls title and everything. Uh, every area is different. But when a listing would jump up, I would absolutely do that. Uh, more importantly, the simple concept of reaching out, you have a listing, for example, in my backyard. 
and you're, you're an agent that I haven't really worked with. And so the question is, how, how do I get a hold of you and how do I start the conversation? The normal rep, in my opinion, is going to send you this blast and it's going to say, hey, Brian, congratulations on the listing. I can order you a farm. I can get you phone numbers. We can start a farm package. I can order you the prelim right now. Meet our escrow officer. Meet this president. And we're all here for you. And check out these seven reasons why you should use me right now. And what I, I, and believe me, I did that as well. But what I found was like, you don't even know me. Like, you know, again, the receiver is like, what? wait a second, dude. Like, you're going to order the prelim now. Like, you don't even know me. There's a lack of rapport in the process. What I found personally, which had my greatest success rate possible when I would do those cold call texts, is I would just simply say, you have a listing on Fifth Street. I'd simply say, hey, Brian, congratulations on your listing on Fifth Street. Uh, I know the area really, really well. It's a beautiful home, and I just want to say congratulations, and I hope it sells by this weekend. You send that, and again, I'm not saying, hey, Brian, this is David. Give me your title. Give me a chance. Give me... No, 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 no. I'm just congratulating you for your listing. And what it, what it does it, is it literally disarms people and people bring their guard down. And, and, and what they have to do, unless they're an ass, is they have to say, thank you so much, David. I appreciate your text. And then I say, you're welcome so much. I, 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 know, I even know the house. I hope it sells this weekend. And they're like, I appreciate it, man. Great connecting. So, so again, that process is, is such a, I'm, I'm just coming with gratitude. I'm, I'm saying congratulations for the listening, but now you better believe the next step when I see him at the board meeting, when I see you, Brian, I'm going to remember this. And this is my sales process. I'm going to go right up to you and I'm going to say, Hey, Brian, I'm David Bravo Jr. Uh, tell me about that listing on fifth street. Were you able to sell it? And they're like, Oh my God. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. We texted. Yes. It's an escrow. Well, congratulations. Uh, I knew it was a beautiful home. I knew it was going to sell quick. You know, I'm glad we're meeting face to face. I, I'd love the opportunity to work with you one day. Changes from a cold to a warm. Oh my God. Yeah. Because I, I'm not going into the process like saying, you don't know me, give me your deal. Like mm -hmm. I'm not going to get anything that way. We, we have to begin the process and we'll get to like how powerful social media is in that process at the end. But, you know, absolutely. I would send text blastages, text blasts. I would have like my top 50 agents that I wasn't working with, that I wasn't working with, and I'd send them a blast. And again, you know, especially Thanksgiving, that's like my favorite holiday because it's non-denominational and everyone loves Thanksgiving and it's not commercialized. And I would kick out something to them. Hey, I just wanted to wish you and your family a wonderful Thanksgiving. I hope you, hopefully you have a great weekend. And sometimes a, a cool trick was I wouldn't even put my name on the text. And that's important because again, someone receives that text, what do you do? You say, thank you so much, who is this? And then you say, my name's David Bravo Jr. I'm your sales rep, whatever, blah, 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 from Pioneer Title. And then they say, oh, thank you so much for reaching out. What I've done is a couple of things. Number one, I, I, I verified that uh, their number works. Uh, number two, what I've also done is since they responded, now we're officially talking. They know that I know that their number works and my number works. And that, now we're officially texting. We've started the dance. And I'm not going for, you know, the, the full-on dinner limo ride. But we've at least started the dance. You now know who I am. Now, it's my job then to follow that up with my sales process of getting to the outcome. But at least, at the very least, if I do nothing, you know who I am. I'm the guy who said, happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. And I'm okay with that because I'll get you later. Any other questions on that? That was a good question. Do, hey, you, have, do you have any unsubscribes from your cold calls? Do they, do people feel like you're invading their privacy with the text messages? No, so two parts to that. No, because again, I'm coming from a place of gratitude. If I'm okay. saying, Brian, congratulations on your listing. It's a beautiful home. Me. <laughs> it's a beautiful home. I hope it sells this weekend. You have to be the biggest ass in the world to be like, how'd you get my number? Who is this? Like, wait a second. I just said congrats on your listing. I'm not asking you for anything. So again, it's how you frame it. It's a completely disarming approach. Uh, and I'm a soft seller. I just, I know I'm going to be in the business for the next hundred years. So, you know, again, I want the marathon process. I'm not trying to close hard on you right now. And, 
when I come with that approach, I never had anyone, you know, shut me down or be a jerk to me. And if they did, by the way, I probably wouldn't want to work with them anyways. Like if, if, if you can't say thank you to someone saying congrats, like we're, we're probably not in alignment anyways, and I don't want to work with you. So I'm okay with that. So anyways. We, hey, David. We, yes. Hi, Valerie. Hi, how are you? Very well. Um, thank you so much for creating for Tile Reps Only. I'm on it all the time. I love it. Um, anyway, I, I just wanted to share. So I do the same thing. And I just one day, you know, okay, Mother's Day and Father's Day are perfect. And here's why. Because mothers, there's there's female and male, right? So at least it it, it you're going to send that blast out, but you're not going to get 180 returns because it's half and half. So you kind of split it up. Yep. So I found that that really works, but it's funny because I do the A to Z thing. I go through my phone and I start at A and I just go down and it takes me maybe a half an hour, but it's so worth the time because yes, I get a lot of appointments out of it. People totally appreciate it. It's because that you, you're connecting with them and they, you know, so I just wanted to recommend Father's Day and Mother's Day is perfect. Sure. No, I love, really I love. And really even good. from from a Mother's Day perspective, it, it's, it's always tough because, uh, you know, not, not all, not all women are mothers, but everyone right. has a mother. So I always make sure I'm, and again, I, I, me and my wife went through in vitro for years and we'll, you know, and, and I, I get that. I know that's a, that's a tough day for some, but right. Coach Mother's Day, I, I say happy Mother's Day to you and yours. Specifically. Right. Like, even your mom, it's all good. Like happy Mother's Day. I love it. Well, and, and some people don't want to have children. And so the, for the yeah. ones that don't, that I know, I just yeah. say happy, thank God you're not a Mother's Day. <laughs> oh, that, no, it's that. seriously, <laughs> it's a joke. And they, know, and, know, and they laugh and they're like, I, I didn't want to be a mother. So, you know, I'm like celebrate that's anyway. You have a mom. That's right. That's yeah. right. So, exactly. So, so yeah, thank you for that, Melvin. And I, I'm a big fan of yours as well. So, so what I what I found was again going back to working with my dad is I I created so much efficiency and I started leveraging technology and I said well I can get to the masses. Me, my my dad is over here just pounding away, just making twenty calls, pounding, and I love that and I respect that. But I'm thinking, shoot, man, uh, I only have to pound you know ten offices, not twenty, and then I can just slide right in. One of the most comfortable like things, a fun fact about me, my absolute comfort comfort in my in my life when I'm working is stick me in my car let me pull over somewhere let me raise the windows let me sit Indian style and just let me hammer my phone when I could do that I'm so efficient like I could spend three hours there and I'm far more efficient than I can ever be you know making calls and sitting in front of the client so you know, I, I think that was like the, the one of the defining moments in my career when me and my dad were both running the same numbers, but I felt he was working so much harder than me, you know, and I, and I learned from that process. So, you know, the, let's segue now into social media. Social media starts coming out and I jumped in like in 2011. I remember my wife, uh, you know, she was like, hey, I'm on MySpace. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. Who is this dude, Tom? And if you're on MySpace, Tom was like the founder. Everyone had a friend named Tom, you know, and, and initially I thought, you know, this is kind of cool. It's kind of cheesy, like a bunch of classmates get together and, uh, you know, say hi to each other, you know, and then I, I wasn't really embracing it then. It, it wasn't until a couple of years later where I saw a couple of people jumping on Facebook and I said, damn, that's interesting. Like that's a past client and that's a past client and they're a potential client. You know, and, and Facebook was really the entry into my coming into social media. And, and so it just kept growing and evolving. And I, and I started looking at like social media platforms as a way just to tear down the walls of like the industry. And, and you know, again, I had the ability to cut, connect with anyone anywhere, which is why we're here like today. Even like this is an example of the power, the good power of social media. So in my backyard, I really started focusing in on, let me make all the connections I can with any past client, uh, any friends or family, because I need them as well to, to like my post. And then let me make connections with people that I potentially want to work with. And that literally was such a game changer, like in my career as well, because I, I embraced whatever the heck knew was coming around the corner. And so what? I, let me pose this question to everyone here. Like, What's the basis of business, right? If, if, if you created, 
these are the laws of business. You know, and I'll actually call on some people because this is fun. These are the laws of business. What is required for you to earn a customer? Samantha, what do you think is the first step like for you to like earn a customer or win a client? What do you think you have to do? For me, it's I focus on relationship building. Relationship building, right. Amen. Anyway, uh, uh, Amy, uh, what is it? What does it look like for you to start the process of winning a customer? Well, I'm, I'm more an escrow, so. Uh, hey, 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 that's, you're more powerful than anyone so in this room. I, I have relationships. It's just being, having good service and, and being yeah. able to help them when, be available. Yeah. Uh, uh, Connie, what, what does it look like to your sales process? If, if you have your eyes set on so-and-so, like, how does that process begin? What, what does the initial, uh, you know, process look like for you? No, usually I follow up with cross sales that I look for them on a cross sale. I love and it. And I'm very diligent. <laughs> very diligent, good. All right, so so in, in my very humble opinion, I believe that all sales, you know, whether you cross out something or, or whether you're looking for a service to client, you know, Samantha, you said it, like, how do I build a relationship? I create a relationship. And, and they all kind of coincide with one very specific word in my freaking Bible, it's rapport. Because again, I come, from, I come from a place that I'm not going to hard close someone that I don't even know. So, so the next step is, at the very least, like how do I create rapport with someone, right? Because before I could ever ask them for the deal, how can I even be in a place where they know who I am, I know who they are, we have common ground, and now I can go for the close and ask for the business. And to me, it's just quite simply rapport. So enter the world of social media. Now, before back in the day, you know, before there was social media, I used to have to call a potential new client. I used to have to text a potential new client. Congratulations on your new listing. Hey, thank you so much. And then I'd see them at the board meeting. We'd shake hands and we'd start the dance. And then one day I'd be like, hey, we should get together for coffee sometime. And they'd be like, sure, I really like that. Send me a text. And then I'd send them text, text after text after text. And they wouldn't respond. And finally, one day, maybe they're like, okay, I'll give you a chance. And it's been months. Like, okay, fine, let's meet. And I'm like, great, let's meet. And then again, even initially, I, I wasn't in a place where I can ask them for the business. I just want to get to know you. Are we in alignment? Do we have common ground? And you start, you know, asking, do you have a family? Do you have dogs? What sports do you like? And then you start the whole process, right? How can we connect? If there was someone that loved English bulldogs, boom, we were in sync and it was over. If there was someone that had a whole load of kids like me, boom, we connected. Uh, if there was someone that loved the Dallas Cowboys or the Lakers or whatever the heck it was, how do I connect with the undeveloped report? Now, enter the world into social media. When social media first started kicking out, I started watching and saying, damn, like everyone on here is telling their lives, everything, good and bad, from what are they doing on the weekend to traveling to political views, to do they have kids? Do they love dogs? Do they love cats? I mean, you could literally sit there and I would watch like, oh my God, I've never met this guy like me, right? Carrie, you've never met me. But I guarantee you, like if we're friends on Facebook, you know exactly who I am. I'm a dude with a bunch of kids. Uh, I love my kids. I love my wife. I love my parents. I do title. I love my kids. I love my wife. I do title. Like that's the same format and it doesn't change. But from a prospecting point of view, I said, I would see clients pop up and I'd be like, dang, we have a lot in common, whatever that is. And I would connect with them. And then after connecting with them, I would be able to say like, hey, I noticed you're coaching your kid in soccer. Like, so do I. How cool is that? What team are you on? Blah, blah, blah. And then I'd say, hey, I noticed you have an English bulldog. So do I. Hey, you like the Dallas Cowboys. So do I. You know, you like B-Dub buses, so do I. And so, so the ability to connect and create rapport on a massive level now became very simple for me. Because again, I wasn't going into it saying, hey, give me your business. I just want to meet you. I just want to create rapport with you. I don't know when we'll ever work together, but I promise you this. I think your family's beautiful. Happy Thanksgiving. And, you know, I hope we get to, to finally work together one day. 
when you come from a place of that and you leverage social media just to, be, to develop massive amounts of rapport everywhere, that was a, literally a game changer for me personally. Because now when I do go to that board meeting once a month, I show, I show up there and I'm like, there's Jerry, there's Samantha, there's Lisa. I remember now of, of you took a trip to Utah, you um, uh, coach your kid in soccer, and you have this beautiful listing that you asked around for a painter that I helped you with because I, you came to Facebook for a need. And now, so when I go to Jerry, I say, hey, Jerry, how was that trip to Utah? Did you go to Zion? How beautiful was that? Right there, report. Hey, David, how you doing? Good to see you. Hey, Lisa, how you doing? You know, how, did you get that painter that you needed? Yeah, 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 thank you so much for the referral. My ability now to connect with anyone, anywhere, like grew exponentially. And it was that ability that I could now go to board meetings and hug people that I've never met before. Like to this day, Carrie, Valley, if, if we see each other like one day, five years from now, I'm gonna give you a hug. Because guess what? We know each other like on social media. So think about if there wasn't social media, could we ever connect? Probably not. Like even this doesn't happen right now. It doesn't happen. It's made the world ridiculously small. And that right there is the, the true power of social media. There are no closed offices. There are no secretaries to tell you, no, you can't come in here. We have a preferred title company, right? There, there's, no, you know, there's no top agents that you can never get to their office and look at their desk and see, what are they interested in? I got to find something. That was the old school way. Now they're like giving it to you. They're giving it to everyone. And now it's just the ability, can you connect with them? You know, not from a place of business either. Like I, I can't stress that enough. You just want to connect with them because if you can connect with them, now you've literally got rid of the first five dates of the conversation. David, are, are you talking um, to these people? Are you using Messenger? Or are you typing on their wall? So this is like a whole, I do trainings with my team, like on the, what does the dance look like? So the first process is you connect with someone. Thank God they, they accepted my friend request. Now, I, I know there's a high probability because I, I have a very specific script. And first off, everyone uh, friend me on Facebook. So you can like literally see what I'm talking about. Uh, they friend me, I friend them. The first process is I'll immediately jump and like their profile picture, like their last post. And we, we get into like analytics. I, I want to make sure the machine of Facebook, the analytics know that we're not just going to create a friendship. We're already going to interact with each other. So I, I drive that home. The next process is no matter what they post next, I'm going to like it again. Uh, and then chances are, if I post something, you know, uh, hugging babies and cuddling with puppy dogs, like they're going to like it too. And then now the process has begun. When they like me, I like them. Now we've begun. The next step is I'm going to comment on them. You know, again, I'm going to just segue into it. If, if they take a trip out to, you know, whatever, Utah, I want to be like, beautiful pictures, great trip. That's it. Nothing like crazy. Um, and then fast forward, probably like a couple weeks later, maybe, maybe even two months later, at some point, I'm going to direct message a client. That realtor who I want to work with, again, we've been liking We've now been commenting and I'm gonna take the next step. So they're gonna post something, a family picture for the holidays, you know, at which point now I'm gonna switch over. Now I'm gonna to go to direct message and I'm gonna say, I just wanna let you know, you have a beautiful family. I wanna wish you a happy holidays. Thank you so much. And then they respond, thank you so much, David. You have a beautiful family as well. You know, great connecting with you. That's like the process. Now, once we're there, now we're officially having a side conversation. And what's crazy, when you look at my Facebook, everyone looks like, oh my God, you got a hundred likes or a hundred comments, like whatever, that's, that's, I love that because it has me connect with people. But in addition to that, what people don't see is how many unbelievable realtors there are that are there, how many unbelievable brokers there are that are there. Uh, how many in, even incredible successful reps in my backyard like that are there and what people don't see is now the back end conversation they don't see how much I talk to brokers I've never met before in my local market they don't see how many times I talk to local agents top agents of our area we have side conversations and messenger and again 
when the time comes, and I don't care if it takes three months or three years or 10 years, if your goal, if you know you're going to be in this business for the next 10 years, you might as well start creating relationships with everyone that you could possibly create. And then at some point, and it might take two years from now, but at some point, I'm going to then see that broker at a live event. We're going to hug each other because he knows all about me and I know all about him. And then I'm going to say, can I tell you something, Neil? I love you. I love you as a person. You're a good, good man. I, I, I pride myself in aligning myself with good people like you. And I'm not trying to sell, sell myself here, but I, I do want the opportunity to work with you one day. And you know what Neil says? Absolutely. I'd love that as well. You should come to my office or we should go to lunch. I swear to God, that's exactly the way the conversation goes and the way the social selling process goes in my backyard. Does anyone have any questions on that? Can you touch on, okay, so you're using Facebook. Yeah. There's so many different um, theories on what social media platforms are best for driving business in this space and going forward. Um, so pretty much everyone here has Facebook, I think almost as a primary thing, but many of us are over on Instagram as well. We're using stories. Um, yeah, both. Uh, Facebook still is the king of all social media platforms. Uh, Instagram, hands down, is second. Uh, uh, and I use both of them. When you so even connect with me on Instagram, you'll see like two different Bravo Juniors. David Bravo Jr. on Facebook is very, very buttoned up. He's a proper man, you know, because again, that's where I have the most business relationships on that platform. You know, again, now I represent an actual company and, I, and I'm not going to do anything to disrupt, you know, or, or, or have anyone unfriend or, or take a polarizing stance with me on Facebook. Instagram, on the other hand, that's like, that's really me. Uh, it's fun. It's playful. It's very joking around. It's very, very light. And again, so when you look at the platforms, right, Facebook, in my opinion, is buttoned up, um, you know, and again, I even have my thoughts on where Facebook's one is. It's a challenging thoughts, but still, it's, it's more proper. People want to get political. People want to talk about everything, but it, it's still a very formal platform, in my opinion. Instagram's totally a lot more relaxed, a lot more cool. Instagram stories are super relaxed. I can post pictures of my burrito at lunch. You know, TikTok is like, let me dance around, you know, and see if I got moves. Like uh, Twitter, I don't tweet because I, in my opinion, I, I think that Twitter is a platform for the celebrities and actual world figures to just get out to the masses. And that's just not me. Um, I noticed that you and I are connected also over on LinkedIn. Yeah, LinkedIn is absolutely very cool. The hardest part for me is where do I focus my attention? You know, and again, why do I have success on, on Facebook? Because I know the way it moves. I know what the analytics want to see. Uh, I know that, you know, uh, you know it, it, it just drives. I, I put so much energy on Facebook because it still is the king of all platforms. LinkedIn, I absolutely love LinkedIn, but I don't have the time for it. I just, I just don't. I have so much energy focused on Facebook and then Instagram that I, I just don't have the time to apply the effort that I should be in LinkedIn. You know, and the effort in Facebook looks like this. I get a lot of likes on my posts because guess what? I like a lot of posts on Facebook. Uh, it's the law of reciprocity, reciprocity at, at its finest. I like you and you have this weird thing in your mind like, oh, David liked my post. He loved it. I should like one of his posts. I should love one of his posts. So I get a lot of likes because I like a lot and I love a lot. The other thing is when someone comments on my post, I absolutely take the time to comment on every single comment of any of my posts. And I'll tell you why. A couple of things. Number one, it's basically like comment courtesy. Someone took the time to say, hey, David, congratulations on your move. I wish you success. The least I can do is say, thank you, Carrie. I appreciate it so much, and I appreciate your words. The least I can do, right? So, so that's just common like gratitude, just say thank you. Now, take it a step further, when you look at the analytics of Facebook, I'm also telling Facebook when I comment on them, after you commented on me, I'm saying, hey, we're really friends, make sure we see each other's posts because we comment on each other and we interact. 
like I'm driving the analytics on the back end to make sure that we constantly stay top of mind. Uh, I, I will give you one tip that not a lot of people focus in on is, is what time do you post? So when you wake up in the morning, like if you're like me, what do you do? I wake up at 6.30, I reach over for my phone like shamelessly, like and I, I reach over and say, okay, did I get hit with any emails last night? Like, are there any fires or things I have to tend to like immediately? Then after that, there's no fires. Then I'm like, okay, it's almost like watching the news. Okay, open up Facebook. Like, is there any world event that I missed last night? Like what jumped out or what something? Then you come through there, you say, oh, so-and-so was, you know, at a restaurant last night, whatever. You know, and I guarantee you, probably 90% of the population looks like that in the morning. You know, they, they also jump online during lunch when we're back at the office. Uh, that, that is a high uh, eyeballs on the screen time. They also jump on it, you know, before they go to bed. Like, you know, between like seven and nine people are on their feet. And why is that important? Because when I post, I post at very specific times because all the eyes are watching the feed. And if I can get early likes or comments on my post, then Facebook will reward, will, will reward you and show it to more people. But if I posted today at you know, two o'clock on a Wednesday and nobody's looking at the platform, the pace, the my post will flounder and it'll just get buried and Facebook, the analytics will just kill it. So the analytics will reward you or or massacre your post at the same time. But that's like yeah, deeper level of Facebook, you know, conversation. But just know if you have a chance to post, Mondays are horrible. Uh, I like Tuesday, I, I prefer Wednesday or Thursday morning at 7 a.m. Because if I could post at that time, I know that everyone else is looking at it at that time. And if I get likes, then the probability of, of Facebook showing it to more and more people will just continue to, to grow. David, what do you think the sales rep of like going forward, like, well, to, like but skill wise, tool wise, yeah. I mean, let's talk about if lead generation is a, is a real it, you know, hot topic. What do you think? In my model, the cyborg, like new sales rep, five years from now, you know, looks like this. It, it's someone who you cannot deny work ethic. Work ethic has to be there, right? And I don't care what sales rep there is, they have a good work ethic and, and it will show on their numbers, period. But in my opinion, the, the adaptation to technology, to social media, to leveraging social selling, to leveraging even uh, tools of farming, apps, like all of these things, that will be the new cream of the crop of our industry. You know, and again, I, I, I'm very fortunate enough because I have my dad's work ethic. I'm fine with that. But guess what? I'm also a smart enough guy to embrace technology, to embrace apps, to embrace social media. Right. So, so one of the things like even predictive farming is hot right now. If I was a sales rep right now, I, I would annihilate some people because I would absolutely focus in more on, on social media and connectivity, which I do that already. But I would focus in on, on what can you guys do in Arizona? Can you guys do everything or do you guys have restrictions? We, we probably have more than I think almost any state in the country particularly in the Phoenix market, okay. more than even Tucson. Can you guys do like trainings and stuff like that though? Yep. Okay, we can't do anything in California. I know, I know. When I was yeah. at Stuart Title, you guys oh don't God. sit at any other part of the room or leave the room and yeah. the rest of this country yeah. stay over there. If I was a sales rep in Arizona, I would be very dangerous because I could sit across from anyone. And when you sit across from a client and you ask them, what's one or two things that you want to focus in on this year and next year to grow your business? I guarantee you they're going to say, I want to learn more about social media. I want to learn more about Facebook ads. I want to learn more about predictive farming. I want to learn more about how do I do stories on Instagram? Like literally that, that's, that's what they want. What we want, you know, is also reflective on what they want. They want to learn how to run Facebook ads, but guess what? There's no one there to show them. They want to learn about Facebook analytics, but there's no one there to show them. They want to learn about how do I set up my Instagram account? What are stories? Like all these different things. 
but there's nobody there like to show them. So if I was a rep in Arizona, I would be running around town like. Okay, so you need to like to stay in California. <laughs> <laughs> well, first off, I'm not a rep. But, I know. Yeah. You know, yeah, but I, but I, I, I enjoy training these, training people of how to do this because again, my job at the end of the day is if I can help everyone, why I'm here today, if I can help anyone grow their business, I don't care who it is. I don't care what company they're at. I don't care what market they work at. That's my job is to help people grow. And I don't care if, if it's a competitor. If someone has the work ethic and the commitment to focus in on this and to make this the greatest job in the world, which I believe in, then damn it, they deserve it. Let them be number one. I don't even help them be number one. I don't care. So, so that being said, if I was a rep in Arizona, I would teach trainings on social media. I would teach trainings on, trainings on Facebook ads. I would show people how to set up business pages and how to leverage ads and drive business pages. I would teach people how to do stories on Instagram, uh, how to set up Instagram. I teach them analytics. And then the, the flip side would be, I would teach them uh, predictive farming, which is huge right now. You know, if I can sit across from you, Valerie, and say, hi, Valerie agent, uh, what area are you farming right now? Uh, whatever, Scottsdale. Uh, show me your farm. Well, I farm these thousand homes every quarter. Well, that's great. Well, what if I can show you based upon, you know, some of the, the data and implementations of technology that I've embraced of instead of mailing out to, to a thousand homes, why don't we mail out to these specific 100? Because I guarantee you over the next 12 months, the probability of probably half of these 100 homes are going to sell is far greater than just shotgun blasting everything. So what am I doing, Valerie? I'm saving you money. I'm making you more efficient. I'm saving you money. I'm focusing your efforts. And again, I'm saving you money. I do that a lot. Dude. A lot. Oh. I narrow people down all the time. I'm like, I don't call it, predict what, what did you call it? Predictive farming. Predictive farming, yeah. We, oh. I, I, I literally get them from mailing out a thousand to down to at least a couple hundred. I'm like, why would you mail to somebody that literally oh. just moved in two weeks ago? But you know, what resources are you using in predictive farming? What, what like, I like to ask. Yeah, what, where, what, what are your resources? Where did you get your training? Uh, uh, a lot of the stuff is self-taught. Like, so when we used to talk yeah. about like turnover rate, um, I, I just, I, I'm a nerd at heart. And I used to study, like I worked the city of Downey. And, and every month when I, when I learned how to do it, I said, God, this is so, so powerful and I can take this to agents. So I break down the map of Downey and I take it into little chunks of whatever, 500 homes. And from there, I would, I would run a report and say, okay, how many homes are there in this area and how many of them sold last month or a year to date? And I'd get, I'd get my own like turnover ratio. I swear to God, it was like on a piece of paper with a map of Downey and I'd write in my little uh, turnover ratio. And then I'd go to market with that. Now we hit a button and it does it for us. Like that's crazy. So, so then you have analytic farming, right? So um, Title Toolbox has it. I'm sure Fidelity has their own proprietary software. But let me tell you, you don't need any of their softwares. I'll tell you exactly who's moving in the marketplace right now. There's four farms. Number one is absentee owners. Absentee owner, the movement in any market is hand, hands down shooting up. Absentee owners, when you're dealing with, with rentals, when you have a high employment, unemployment rate that's, that's jumping up and people can't pay their rent and there's just un insecurities of the marketplace. The market's great, that's fine. There's incredible question marks in the marketplace. So if I own my, my single family house and if I own a, uh, a duplex right down the street, if I'm uncertain of the market, guess which one I'm selling? I'm not selling my house. I'm going to cash out on that bad boy and, and have an extra hundred grand in my pocket just in case that COVID doesn't go anywhere. Like, so hands down, absentee owners are huge right now. The next farm that I, I absolutely love is empty nesters. Run transfer dates to your areas of prior to 1985 and below. And you could run, if you can, in your marketplaces, run over, let's say, 2,500 square feet. Arizona has big houses. And so what you'll find is you'll get, okay, here's a farm of you know, 200 homes. I dare you, watch those 200 homes over the next like three years, I would say, 
they're all going to sell because I'm dealing with my mom right now. She has a 2,800 square foot house, a big giant acre yard with a pool, and she's tired. My mom's gonna, my mom's 70. She's tired of maintaining their yard. Nobody's there, just her and my stepdad. She'll be selling uh, probably in the next like month or two. Those, all those empty nesters will all be coming to market, whether they like it or not, because nobody wants to maintain a big house when the kids aren't there anymore. The next farm, which is my baby, is move up salaries. Go to market with move up salaries. Run properties that transfer between 2000, you could do like 2012 or 13 to like 2015 or even 16. And run smaller homes, run properties, let's say under you know, 1300 square feet and see what shows. And you, you'll get like 100 homes. And how do I go to market with that with agents? As I say, here's the deal. These are move up sellers. The goal in life, chances are, what do they look like, those, those owners? They're first time home buyers. Uh, maybe it's a young couple. Uh, maybe it's a, a, only a two bedroom house. They just use the master with an office. But guess what? They're gonna wanna buy a dog. They're gonna wanna have more kids. They're gonna want a bigger living room. And they're gonna need a bigger house. And they're at the stage now where I can go to a move up seller and say, Mr. Jones, uh, I, I'm sure you're well aware uh, you're sitting on $200,000 of equity. You know, are you ready for another bedroom? Are you ready for a bigger yard? When you look at the data on those move up sellers, not only are they selling, but from a realtor perspective, you get the listing and you're going to get the sale as well because they're now ready to buy. Uh, a four or $500,000 house because they have a hundred grand in equity or 200 grand in equity. You double dip those. So that, that, those are my thoughts on like predictive farming. You don't need fidelity. You don't need title toolbox. Like if you just focus on those alone and, I, and do it for yourself, those are the true farms of any marketplace which are moving at an incredibly high rate. So absentee owners, empty nesters, and then you gave the dates and the square footage. Yeah. And then move up sellers, you gave the date range and the size of the, the properties to look at. So is the size of the property part of that? Or you said it works? It's part well. of it. Because again, you want someone who bought a smaller home and mm -hmm. chances are they're a young couple who that was the first house that they bought. But guess what? They, they potentially, there's a high probability they want to have kids. They need an extra bedroom. You know, that, that second bedroom's in office right now. And, you know, part of the conversations at home is like, well, shoot, where are we going to put little Billy? Is he going to sleep like in our room forever? They want a bigger house. Like, they want it now. And I guarantee you, there's pull up those farms right now and then save the numbers and pull them up again, the same exact farm, a year from now and watch that turnover rate. It, it'll absolutely be validated. And the, the empty nesters as well, if you, if you guys have a, a way to run, again, transfer days prior to 85, but run two-story homes, that's like crazy, dude, because you're dealing with owners in their late 60s and 70s, right? Nobody wants to live in a two-story home at 70. Like, it, it, it just, it's rough on the knees and you get tired of it. Those specific homes are just off the charts, like moving crazy fast. So what do we do with this data? We go to the marketplace, we go to a potential client, we go to a potential you know, listing agent and say, hey, I've always been a big fan of yours. Will you do me a favor? Will you just let me show you a couple of things? I know you spend $1,000 a month uh, in mail out. If I can show you how you can spend 200 bucks and you get a much higher probability of getting business, would you be open to that? They'd say, sure, Valerie, come on down. And there you go, like walking through sales. Yep. But, but when, you, when you combine social media and then the understanding of apps and the understanding of, of the new way to farm, this all combines for a ridiculously successful sales rep in five years. And, and you know they will be absolutely at the top of the market. And it breaks my heart, but a lot of like the people like my father who don't know these things, who are just blue collar pound the pavement. He's been lucky because there haven't been reps that have entered into his backyard like this, but one day there will be. I see these new reps, you know, 
spiking and they get apps and they get social media. Those are the dangerous ones because if they one day develop a work ethic, like that's scary, uh, you know, because they're, they're, they're going to put all of us out of business one day, you know, so we might as well start embracing that now before we'll all be dinosaurs sipping coffee somewhere. Same. I remember the way it used to be. <laughs> Good what do you think about some of the, I mean, the coffee appointments, the lunches, I mean, it. I, it's been a crazy ride the last five days for me. There's no other, there's no substitution for face-to-face -face and shaking someone's hand and giving someone a hug. You know, again, make no mistake. I have, I have all this, you know, data and technology and stuff like that, but my true uh, purpose is how do I get in front of you and how can I sit with you for lunch and how can we just interact with each other I'm, I'm not that absolutely still exists the word if, if I if, if my phone got shut off right now and I had to make and I'm a rep and I had to make 20 office calls today I can do it I have no problem with that I, I if anything I love that but but we also cannot control what the new phone marketplace looks like I even miss that to a certain extent. I miss offices going in there and you see 50 agents at their desk hammering away. That's just not the case anymore, especially in California. People aren't at the office, they're remote. So if we know that, now it is what it is. The market's the market. Now, how do we adjust? How do we, how do we shift to get to them? You know, hence technology and social and everything else. But my goal still to this day is uh, how do I sit with someone at Starbucks and just literally be able to connect with someone in front of someone? So that's still my goal. Uh, Mine too. Mine too. That's right. How much time do we have? Well, I think five. for us that have been around a while, I've been since 1990. I know Absolutely. Connie's been probably as long as I have. You know what? Lisa and I were actually having this conversation the other day and, and I go, you know, most of our clients, we've had them for 20 years. That's like, right. They're older like us. That's so right. we, we don't we don't want to know about social media. We want to go to coffee. We actually want to go to lunch. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Uh, that's cool. I but value also, that. These people stuck with us because it's because they're around our same age. And, yeah. you know. Absolutely. And they don't want to know technology. Now some do. So we do have to learn how to work with a younger generation for sure. But start um, pulling up the data of how many new realtors are entering into your market. Pull up that data. And then pull up what's the average age of these realtors. And you'll see the 30-year-olds kicking in. And guess what? The 30-year-olds freaking, they know Snapchat. They know TikTok. <laughs> like, they know all these things. So yep. you have to decide, like, you know, again, if I plan to be on the marketplace in 10 years, I need to at least have the chance of working with these new kids. I need to speak their language. I need to know what they're looking at. I need to be able to connect with them. So it's, it's a very pivotal point in the marketplace, in my opinion, incredibly pivotal. You know, and everyone's going to have to decide, me included, do I want to work with some 25-year-old on TikTok? Like, I don't know, do I? I guess it's a personal question, but like, I do, because I plan on being in the business for 20, even 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I'm going to close with this really quick, because this is something very, very important. Everyone sees that the Bravo Junior owner is successful, blah, 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 whatever. Uh, you, you have to know what you, what you see now is is a uh, a testament to the journey of my past. And I want to take you to 2006 and why it's so important. I think we're in the greatest job in the world, period. And let me support that. In 2006, I got married. Uh, we had a son, Johnny. And, you know, we, we only had one boy and we were trying for kids for forever and it just wasn't working. Uh, you know, and, and I decided, I said, you know, I want to do something else other than title because... You know, I want to diversify and blah, blah, blah. So I opened up a fish store and it was a, a saltwater aquarium store and I opened this up and, you know, that was like my baby. I'm an entrepreneur at heart. I said, here's my little store. And, you know, I, I remember working at the fish store at, on a Tuesday night and I was still doing title at this time. And, and my dad thought I was crazy that I was, you know, I, I poured 150 grand into this like starting. And I, and, you know, so I opened up this fish store 2006 comes along, and then 2007 comes along. And you gotta understand, I'm dead in the water. I have no money, because I invested in this fish store. Uh, I have no re re reserves, because it's in this fish store. Uh, I was working on, on Tuesday through Sunday nights. You know, and some nights I'd cash out this little register, and I'd cash it out, and it's a Tuesday night, and I'd say, wow, this is great. Uh, 
we made $50 like today. I'm here, I'm away from my wife, I'm away from my son for 50 bucks. Like, and I remember there was a very defining moment in my career because I, I, I knew I was in financial trouble. I knew I got caught with my hand in the cookie jar and I was, I was dead in the water. And I wrote a letter to my dad. I said, I said dad, I, I wanna write this to you because I wanna, I wanna share with you my personal feelings, but it's called the culmination. And the culmination basically summarized like this. I get it now. I get, I get how long I've had this opportunity and the greatest job in the world called title and I've been failing at it. Like I've been, I've been taking it for granted, right? I, I've been literally not applying myself fully, but it took me opening up a fish store to realize how good my actual career was. Like it, it took me to, to, to lose my house. It took me to move into my mom's house with my, my son, Johnny, and my wife and I sleeping in her little guest bedroom. It took me to get rid of the BMW and to buy a Toyota Yaris. Like this, this whole process, this transformation, I completely understood of, of how lucky I was to be entitled. And it was a disservice of me to not take advantage of that. You know, so long story short, I, I did go through my lumps and, and I would recommend anyone like, you know, we've all had previous jobs before. I hope everyone gets the chance to do something else other than title, wait tables, uh, uh, you know, whatever, whatever, be a server at a restaurant. Uh, but when you come back to title, you will see how beautiful of a job this is. We're in the business of creating relationships. We have a chance to like have coffee and that's a business call. Uh, it, it, our hard work consists of pick up the phone and send some text messages and dial. And, you know, again, that's not hard work. I'll tell you what's hard work is freaking my gardener on a, on a Tuesday when it's 100 degrees outside, you know, getting at my weeds and trimming the head. That's hard work. What we do is pleasant and enjoyable. And in my opinion, it's the greatest job in the world. But it took me going through that of, of losing everything to really see how lucky I was to be in this business. And after that, you know, in 2009, I had my best year ever in title. And you got to understand, 2009 was a horrible market, horrible. In 2010, I then beat it and had my best year ever again. 2010 was horrible, brutal. Foreclosures everywhere, it was horrible. You know, and that was the first year I closed a million dollars in title premiums only. I closed a million bucks. And then 2011, I closed like a million too by like October. And one of the defining moments, if I can close with this to share with anyone like who, who's hearing this is you have to understand like one thing, no matter what market we're going to face, no matter what market was behind us, no matter, no matter what the future holds with anything, with our global economies, anything, it is not the market. And that was such a defining moment, like for me to realize it's not the market, dude. I don't need some crazy thriving market to be successful. And I, and I proved that in my own backyard and I hope everyone can grasp that because if the interest rates up, go up to 5% by the end of next year, I don't care. If, if foreclosures spike up you know, next year and we're in a world of hurt, I don't care. It, it's not the market, it's you and it's me and it's whatever value that we can provide to our individual marketplaces. So with that being said, it's the greatest job in the world. Um, you know, I'm, on, I'm honored to be in this room and I'm glad we got the chance to connect. Wow, thank you so much for sharing your time and your story. That is, um, I, I, I'll just, my opinion, one of the best masterminds that I think we've had is listening to you and everything. I, I think there's so many people out there right now that do title sales that are very nervous about what our future looks like. Just, you know, the val what, what is our value? What, what are we bringing to the table? And so, um, you, you gave a lot of clarity, at least speaking for me, I feel really good about this. So sure. thank you so much, David. Thank you, David. I got to go, but it was great. So, yes. Thank you. I'm going to stop recording. And so, um, I know that I've gotten a couple of requests, um,